In 2016, using a tiny sample size of 45, scientists were able to estimate that the average Chinese adult consumed 3.1 cigarettes and 8.1 millilitres of pure alcohol per day. How? One more time, in 2016, using a tiny sample size of 45, scientists were able to estimate that the average Chinese adult consumed 3.1 cigarettes and 8.1 millilitres of pure alcohol per day. How? Okay, well, I think the first, my, my first thought is that averages are immediately skewed by extremes. So um, it's very easy to have like a older part of the population maybe like smokes a lot or drinks a lot, then skew the data completely. I think I've landed upon something that is probably very close to correct, but I don't want to just say that. <laughs> okay, you you get to take the gamble here, Alec, which is that you get to sit back, you let Beryl and Jacqueline take this question, and we hope you're right. If not, uh, you you come back in later on. Okay. Well, my thought is that like the small sample size needs to somehow be representative of something much larger so like the 45 has to actually be way more and like how is it like 45 sets of identical triplets mm. <laughs> and so they all have the same dna and so it can like be representative of a larger sample size or so because like yeah 45 doesn't work on its own to give you an accurate number so how can that 45 actually be really big yeah you've spotted that it's not 45 people Oh, 45 districts, 45 <sighs> groups from like different age, like demographics. No, they, they only took 45 samples. They only had to analyze 45 samples here to get that, that estimate. 45 samples of what? Like samples of like, like spit, samples of blood, samples of toenails, samples of hair, sample, it could be a sample of anything, samples of... This is a G show. I don't know. Like it could be. <laughs> it could be samples of well, like the. It was until that joke. <laughs> it could be samples of like their garbage or something, and they could see how like much like how many cigarettes Ooh. are discarded or how much alcohol is discarded. Like neighborhood garbage cans. Yeah. So that they would then be able to look through and be like, oh, but a sample. So they looked at a sample of forty-five and figured out smoking and drinking habits. Yeah. Trash does connect. Because that could because easily be skewed, right? Because if you have like a chain smoker, they could be throwing out a lot more in the trash than like the average person, which would show the skewed data. Ah, what if it's like public ashtrays and it was like Ooh. like 45 locations in around like a town because like people walk in smoke and also like at the end of the night, like at least, you know, in New York City, there's like always empty bottles like True. in the morning, usually filled with pee, but like before oh. then they're not. <laughs> But I just mean like the morning after you can get a sense of what happened the night prior. You're getting very close with that. Okay. Alec, are we close to where you were? Yes, but I was thinking the sample was probably taken prior to consumption. Ooh, what do you mean? But then how would you know if they consumed it? Like, I have a bottle of whiskey in my house that I've not touched. It doesn't mean I'm drinking it. I was I was just thinking, so maybe this isn't correct, but I was just thinking you could just look at like 45 liquor stores and tobacco shops and count the sales versus the number of buyers. Oh. Now, in this case, Alec, I don't think you could be more wrong with that statement. Oh, no, really? Okay. Uh, Ooh. The girls were closer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, interesting. I feel like there's something with the public, like, public sampling because it has to be skewed because I would be shocked if the average person was having three cigarettes a day. So they have to be because it was it. also like I feel like we were close on the trash part. I agree, right? Landfills, uh, or again, very close. Gutters. People throw stuff into the gutter, and then it gets stuck in the drain pipes and stuff. So they cleared out and they checked water treatment. Forty-five water treatment facilities. I'm mm. going to give you that one, Beryl. That's close enough. You know when you Ooh. were just listing bodily fluids and things like that, and then you stopped. You should have kept going. <laughs> Wow, I've they, never I, heard that before, but they, they, I, I will next time. <laughs> my brain did think like about the um, COVID prevalence in wastewater. I was like, well, maybe they could do that with nicotine and alcohol. Yeah, Sewage epidemiology is the term. Yeah, you can do that for COVID prevalence, but you can do it for nicotine and alcohol. And yeah, 3.1 So it cigarettes. did come back to pee? 
it absolutely did come back to pee. Yes. Wow. <laughs> you, you cut yourself you know, off on saying it's a G show. I don't want to talk about bodily waste. And then, <laughs> and then, yes, it <laughs> back around. I was close on the pee because I talked about the pee in the in the morning in New York City. I should have kept on that pee train. <laughs> yeah. So yes, when when I say accurate, um, it was it was not three point one cigarettes. Per person, it was the nicotine usage over the whole population can yeah. be pretty accurately checked by testing wastewater. 